Yeah, this one's going to be a little quick, uh, mainly because uh, I didn't get to watch the game, of course, because of the Longhorn Network um, with the Texas Longhorns. I know that you know my buddies that are still in Austin, uh, during the week, uh, they received the news that uh, AT&T U-verse uh, picked up the channel, um, and which is what I had when I was uh, living in Austin, but now I'm not there anymore, and so they don't have it here where I live now. So, still, and as well as next week, unless I am able to head back to Austin and watch the game in person, I uh, didn't get to see the guys play, at least the full game. Uh, so just, I mean, like I've told you guys before, um, I can't stand really talking about the game um, without really knowing what's up and watching the whole game. Uh, but from what I've, I listened to a little bit on the radio uh, while I was watching uh, Michigan get hammered by Alabama, uh, Running game is fine. Uh, with, with Joe Bergeron and Malcolm Brown, uh, those guys are just killing dudes right now. Uh, loving what that what we're going to get from that. Uh, quarterback play, uh, saw that Ash had 74% passing, but from what I've heard, most of what it was was a bunch of dink and dunk stuff, a lot of screens. Um, still going to have to see more from the quarterback position. Um, what else? Uh, you know, Jackson got himself a touchdown. Uh, the defense, uh, you know, Bindham got him a pick. Uh, Vaccaro got a pick. Um, they did give him an ATR touchdown pass, though that was more of a breaking tackles than leaving someone wide open downfield. Uh, so, you know, hey, they won 37-17. They beat Wyoming. Uh, you're not going to learn a lot from this team right now uh, this week. Wyoming is one of those kind of like they're, they're a pretty good ball club for what they are. Uh, next week against New Mexico, we're not going to learn a thing from New Mexico uh, because they're awful. Uh, so, you know, no, unless we play horrible, uh, we're not going to learn anything about this team because they, uh, you know, if we blow them out, well, they don't really have much resistance in the first place. Um, I guess just some other thoughts from the week in college football. Uh, Oklahoma uh, playing UTEP. Uh, I don't, I don't, Longhorns fans, and I hope most of you don't, don't buy into the thinking that OU is going to be terrible or something or, or now that there's a chink in the armor that we can, that now all oh, Texas has got them now. Uh, OU does this quite often. Um, they don't really show up in the season opener, and uh, they Bob usually gets the guys together and they they get everything fixed by the time they play us in Dallas. Um, so you've got so yeah, but I mean that was I'll give this to him. You know, from positives for Oklahoma, uh, Landry Jones showed me that he can move in the pocket, and they couldn't get to him. They could not sack him because they had some problems up front on the offensive line. And uh, Landry was able to move around. wasn't as accurate as he usually is. Uh, but a lot of that was because of the pressure. Kenny still is still a playmaker for those guys. Um, and secondary wise, they did great. Uh, but like I said, the promising thing about that game was that, for a Longhorn standpoint, is if UTEP can run the ball on them, you would hope that the Texas Longhorns could. Uh, but more than likely, they'll get things fixed up by that point. Um, other parts in the Big 12 saw Baylor just completely destroy uh, the Garrett Gilbert-led uh, SMU Mustangs. Um, you know, I was really wanting to see. You know, I, I still, I still want to see, see if Garrett could do well. Uh, no, he he didn't have it today. And I'll give it to Baylor and Nick Florence. Uh, you know, I I was under the impression that I knew Florence was a good quarterback, uh, but I was under the impression that Baylor was just going to be awful uh, without RG3. But after Week One, looked pretty impressive. Um, West Virginia, you know, we knew that they were good, and Geno Smith has just left off where he left the season last year by whipping up on Syracuse. I mean, uh, uh, Clemson, Syracuse. Wow, uh, Clemson in the in their bowl game last year, dropping seventy. They dropped sixty nine against Marshall. Um, so they're looking strong as well. Right now, the Big Twelve has ha had a good week overall. Uh, most of us didn't play anybody, anybody any good. Um, you know, I mean, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State dropping 84 on Savannah State doesn't really do much for me. Uh, but the fact that they had nine rushing touchdowns uh, shows you that they're they're looking like they're going to run the football more, um, and we're going to have a tough one in Stillwater this year. So, uh, week one was good. Uh, Wish I could have watched the Longhorns. Wish I could watch them next week, but of course I can't because of the Longhorn Network. Um, I may some point give you guys a little more thoughts on that whole thing. Um, you know, I, I'm as a as a UT grad, as someone who you know loves the team and loves the school. Uh, I think it's great to have our own network and that we'll, we're able to build on that. And I know it brings a lot of revenue for the school. Um, 
but you know one of you know it's it's really been a problem for most Longhorns fans. We can't watch the games, um, and you know you've got. I remember reading a quote from De Los Dodds, and I'm I'm uh, kind of paraphrasing it, but you know a lot of people were upset about that. There's going to be three games on the Longhorn Network this year, and he knew that a lot of people were upset. And pretty much the response was no pain, no gain. Pretty much, uh, I know it's a money thing. I know that's what it's about. But dang, you know, you 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 think that you really, you know, a a, a channel devoted to Longhorn sports shouldn't screw over Longhorn fans. Um, but that's kind of what's going on at this point. Um, so next week, same same song and dance with New Mexico. Uh, then we'll get to see uh, the Horns play Ole Miss on the road. Uh, that should be a win for Texas. Um, that I, and I say should, very, you know, trepidatious, but uh, that we should be better than Ole Miss. Then it starts in Stillwater against Okie State, then at home against West Virginia, then in Dallas against Oklahoma. That's the murderer's road for Texas. That's where we'll really see what kind of team, what kind of season we're going to have. Um, love the running game. Love that we're getting to – it looks like we're going to have somewhat of a – power running attack that's going to be effective. We've tried this before where we've been told a power running attack by Texas and what it is, it's just a, a really bad eye formation and we can't throw the ball more than 10 yards. Um, uh, like I said, still not stolen David Ash, but I think he's a better choice than Case McCoy. Um, I, I, I will say I do believe it is inexcusable uh, and I know that the whole Garrett Gilbert thing really messed up a lot of the problems for Texas, but the fact that the two guys behind him, Case McCoy and David Ash, for the most part, when I get to watch them, don't look like they could even play in Conference USA. Um, heck, Conference USA quarterbacks like, I don't know, G.J. Kinney uh, are better than those guys. Um, so, but we'll see. I, I, I'm said, I, I think Dave has a good upside. I don't want to be too hard on him. I know he's a sophomore. Um, you know, I just, I, I, we don't need a Colt McCoy. We don't need a Vince Young. But I would like someone who, when we do have to throw, there's a threat of making a play. And it's not just Jackson Shipley having to do everything. Um, so that's what I thought so far this first week. Uh, you know, good week overall. Good week for the Big 12. Still undefeated, though we didn't play anybody. But um, so we'll see you guys next week. Uh, Cowboys start Wednesday night. Uh, I'll be talking about that. Uh, so, and I'll actually get to watch that ball game. So a little more. It'll make a little more sense than this whole video did. So, see you guys later. Always, forever. Hook 'em horns.